Hello and welcome to um, Submission Workshop 3, True Colour, with me, Steve Allen, um, and Rick Stutt. Um, I'm, um, as I've said, Steve Allen, and I'm um, also right under um, That Looks Queer, um, who, um, as uh, someone who is seeking to uplift LGBT plus um, art practice, um, in and around Sheffield, but also uh, wider afield. So um, we've entitled this um, True Colour in order to explore um, colour theory um, and people's views on how they view colour. And if you um, have joined us, we've started with a new little device that I've been exploring in and around Zoom. Um, which is a poll on your least favourite colour. So basically just to break the ice, um, I always find it boring when the first things like ice breakers as a whole, but when people ask what their favourite colour is, it just seems like a really, really boring and inane thing. Whereas actually, I find it more interesting to ask people what their least favourite colour is. So unfortunately, um, if anybody feels up to sort of starting with what their least favourite colour is and an explanation of why. Um, I don't mind going first, but it seems a little bit sort of self-serving and egotistical for me to go first, if anybody else wants to start off. Pink. Pink for you. It wasn't really, I, I mean, the other thing is I, cho I chose the colours of the rainbow just because it seems like a relatively obvious device. Yeah, um, but um, it's a spe specific type of pink as well. And it's for obvious reasons. It's because it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be feminine. So it's a really pinky, pale pink that I don't like. Mm -hmm. But mm, to be honest with you, I like most colours, but it's the symbolic significance of certain colours that I don't like. That's fair enough. I mean, there's a school of thought that says that traditionally pink was actually a masculine colour, sort of it, and it was sort of in the Victorian age that, that pink, because it was closer to red, uh, mm. was had that sort of, uh, and red being this sort of colour of sort of virility mm. and masculinity, that pink was actually for boys and blue for and blue for girls because it was sort of softer and more serene and closer to the sea and all of those sort of other ideals and there was just this sort of strange subversion in victoria in sort of victorian era but um but again it's just it's strange how people's views on colour drift and change with societal norms. Mm. So, anybody else with regards to their least favourite colour and why? A green in painting. Green's really hard to use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, this, this is bas basically the, the whole reason for this sort of icebreaker was a conversation between I said, I asked what I asked Rick what his favourite colour was, and Rick said, I'll tell you what my least favourite colour is, and it's green. <laughs> so... I think a lot of greens can look quite sickly. Some can look quite fresh, but I think I chose green because, looking at all of them, I could think of more green colours that I didn't like than more variations of the other colours. So, but I quite like green on the whole. I think, I think for me, it's the relationship with it when I'm doing a painting that it's just really hard to, yeah, I, I, I can't even think of a, 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 a good green painting anyway. <laughs> but it's just a really hard, it's just a really difficult colour to wrestle with. But if you look at a, a, like, if you're out in nature and see a green landscape, it's beautiful. But to, trying to actually work with it is, is really, really tricky. I find anyway. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and I, I sort of posed the question as to you were you didn't like it because you were scared of it, which was a little bit sort of no, 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 naughty. Yeah, it's, it's just like an unruly child. It's just a pain, you know. Whereas yeah. there, are, there are other there are other colours that are like kind of you know what you do, I, I know what I'm doing with it, and I know what we'll do, and you know. Well, mm. the, the, the only time green is really helpful, and I think I've told you this, that is, is with skin tones, and it, yeah. it, it really just really helps take it away from that kind of garish red and just kind of takes the edge off the red if you mix it in. So yeah, it's, it's, it's good for mixing in with other colours just to kind of pull things back from the edge, but oh, yeah. <laughs> well, for me, I've got two. Yellow, because I don't like things that see, that force you to be cheerful. And I think for me, yellow is that colour that people gravitate towards if they want to be their mood to be lifted. And I just think that of all the colours that exist, it has this sort of artificial sort of quality of lifting your mood when often sometimes you want to be sad you want to just live with the feelings that you have and i think that yellow is sort of oppressively cheerful perhaps it, perhaps it just speaks to my sort of overall feeling of melancholy but <laughs> sometimes i just like being melancholy but again and the other one is burgundy. I think that it's what red should be, burgundy. I just think that it's, it's a, it's a colour that's sort of been shamed into existence. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't, uh, there's something about it. It's, it's not quite purple. It's not quite red. It's, that sort of weird middle ground of a colour. But and, and for me it's just it's a colour that dare not speak its name. Anyway. The, I think yellow and burgundy are probably my two favourites. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we here we are. I mean that that's fair enough. I quite like that being dragged into happiness thing. <laughs> Sometimes I'll just buy myself some yellow flowers in, in order to do exactly. That's, I mean, that's, that's fair enough. If it's, if it's needed, it's fine. It's when it's, I think for me, sort of sitting with my feelings is something that I have found difficult. And perhaps it's just me. It's a very me thing to not like yellow. For others, I see the benefit of it. But for me, I'd rather just sit with my feelings than have yellow exist and force me into a state of cheerfulness. <laughs> Who, who'd have thought that this was going to turn into a sort of deep and personal, sort of harrowing <laughs> idea of sort of deep personal issues? But here we are. Right. Um, that's, what that's what the colour starts to kind of get into your soul, doesn't it? It really does. It really does. And well, speaking of that, um, Johanna's Itten. I know some people will sort of believe that, and Johanna's Itten believed in this sort of mystical quality behind, uh, behind colour. Uh, just bear with me while I have a look at his quote. He said that, um, hang on, colours must have a mystical capacity for spiritual expression without being tied to objects. Um, which again, this sort of strange unlocking of, if you have, um, and another one, was, I can't remember the other one that I've posted on the uh, on Twitter the idea that let's see if I can bring it up la, la, la. Do, 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 do. But yeah it's this idea that um, color has this mystic power behind it but it's only unlocked for people who are true sort of proponents of it true believers 
And the idea of this, he was also a proponent of Mazdaznan, this spiritual uh, ideology that had these sort of strict rules behind it um, that um, existed within the within the Bauhaus. This sort of strict diet, breathing exercises, in order to help him unlock this sort of other unearthly power um, of colour, which along with that came difficult and quite abhorrent ideas towards sort of the um, veneration of people who are white. It, he, it basically was a white supremacist idea, ideology. Uh, and again, I do not have the capacity to speak about uh, about racism. So while I can sort of state that Mazdaznan's as an ideology, I personally believe it to be abhorrent for this reason. I, as a white non-binary person of privilege, I'm not furnished enough to be able to explore this fully. So at this juncture, I will just say that I'm speaking about Itten and his colour theory, but as far as Mazdaznan is concerned, that is something for somebody else with regards to race relations to investigate and to look into in a much more thorough critique. And you are more than welcome to challenge me on that and the reasons for that. Okay, doke. It's, it's myself and Rick have spent quite a long time discussing this. Well, I'd, I'd never heard of him. And then you said, because, you know, we wanted to do something about colour and spirituality and so on. And you said, oh, it's an, you know, he's got some theories about this. And I was like, oh, right, could be interesting. And started reading up on him. And like, he's a, he's a white supremacist, uh, Steve. <laughs> I'm yeah. not, you know, this is not, <laughs> this is not a nice guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, I, I, I'm very, I'm interested in colour, I'm interested in spirituality, but I, I, yeah, I don't think there's a, from what I've read, I don't think the two aren't kind of linked in his mind. It's just that, you know, he did this colour theory, he was also a really racist, you know, yeah. um, which makes him a seriously problematic individual, I think. Yeah. You know? It's been... It has been something that I have wrestled with seriously with regards to talking about him. But I think that the most important thing is an exploration of colour, which is what we are doing with regards to, I think that moving, moving on is the next thing to do here. Yes, I would want to distance myself from any of Itton's <laughs> thoughts yeah. and ideas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, right. Swiftly on, uh, Rick's, Rick's work, I think, is going to be the, um, and an exploration of, the, of your colour theory. Um, so we can have a look at uh, some of Rick's work and how that's sort of um, the, the ideas there. So would you prefer to show us around or... Um, would it be a case of sharing the screen at this juncture? Uh, well, shall I talk a little bit about the work I'm doing, I'm working on at the moment? That'd be good. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, well, I, so I'm a painter and, you know, colour is, I don't know that I have a colour theory, I just have an experience of it, you know, and you start to, well, for me, just the more I use it kind of instinctively, you know, um, working with it, I suppose. And the more you, the more you um, kind of jump into it and delve into it, the more complicated colour is, you know. So if, if you've got a white wall in your, in your house or, or just a white sheet of paper now, you look at it now, it, 
it, you, you think, oh, it's white, but no, I mean, I look at a white wall now, just behind the camera, and I can see pinks, yellows, beiges, you know, ev everything that we think is, you know, oh, that's red, or that's blue, or whatever, they're actually really alive surfaces, they really shimmer, and, you know, that, that um, and it, it depends on, on the colour of the light shining on it, all kinds of stuff, you know, so colour is not a straightforward thing, so, and if you're going to try and transfer that experience onto the canvas, um, that's where things become really exciting to me. Mm. And how do you, um, how do you, do you kind of embody that liveliness on the canvas? So if I was just painting a white wall, you can't. You, well, you can just get some titanium white and paint paint it white, but it's it, it's. I, well, I can't do it that way. It just looks mm. dead to me. So how do you how do you paint a white wall on a on a, in a painting in a way that really has that liveliness uh, that that that, are, that, that, that color has? Um, and I suppose the way I do it is by layering up um, paint, and 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 that's when paintings really start to get exciting to me. And mm -hmm. putting one layer of paint on top of another, and then that the light is 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 bouncing off the different layers of paint. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's called glazing. Um, so the light bounces off the different layers of paint and then it starts to really do something really exciting. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, did someone, did someone interject? Please do if, if someone wants to. No? I don't know no. how these things work. If, if anyone wants to say anything, then, then shout or whatever it is. Um, and, yeah, um, who is it? Hugh O'Donoghue. He's uh, an amazing Irish painter, and he said, uh, uh, "Like painting is, is like reverse archaeology. You, 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 rather in archaeology, you're taking up away layers to discover things. In, in, in painting, you're putting on layers and layers, and, and, and discovering something as you put on the layers. And for me, that kind of that process, and you can you, in a minute you can show the kind of process of, of, of that, okay. um, that process." You, 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 it, it gets to a moment where you put on a layer and suddenly the painting has become a, suddenly sprung into life. You know, the first couple of layers, it's just a, it just feels kind of a dead thing. But then all of a sudden, it's this organic living thing, and then you're having a conversation with it. And and then you 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 putting on layers, but you can also take off layers. So that, I mean, this um, I was just doing this this today, so it's still damp. So you know, if I wanted to, I can you know I can I can take off. A layer, and then it kind of, uh, you know, the the the, the yellow shining through. So you, you kind of give and take and pushing and pulling with it, um, and that's when it gets really exciting. And so you're you're in conversation with the materials, you're in conversation with the you're painting. If you, you know, if you, I'm a figure of painter, so you're in conversation with the figures and so on. Um, and that's that's the kind of wrestling in the studio, really, and where the energy is in the studio. And sometimes it's horrible, and sometimes it's it's hellish. Um, what it? Luke, Luke Toyman said that the first four hours of a painting is, is pure hell. You know, it's, you just think this is never going to happen. But then all of a sudden, bing, you know, it, it kind of bangs into life, you know. Um, do, you want to, do you want to show that series of... Yes, certainly. That, that, ...that show that kind of process? All right, where are we? Do, 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 photos. Uh, right, I just need to go back. There we are. So. Yeah, so this, so this is um, uh, one of the paintings in this series. So I'll start with a, uh, a well, I start with, with the bodies and, 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 and people interacting together and feeling the energies of the bodies in a room and take photos and then um, Back home, I find the photo that seems to be saying what I want to say, and then I do a drawing, and the drawing, the drawing um, just helps me to start to understand how the tones are going to form shapes and and, and create this world. I mean, the drawing in itself is really interesting. Just these different densities of carbon on a sheet of paper, and and it's this kind of miraculous alchemical thing that just these different densities of carbon are suddenly describing a world. Also, in this picture, like. There's, there's a person there, and how is that? It's, it, I mean, it's amazing. It's, it's just 
carbon on paper, but suddenly there's this person there. Um, and then I'll, if you go to the next one. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. So then I'll transfer it to the canvas and um, I'll say in a minute why I'm doing these really quite garish colours. Um, and start to, I, I do an underpainting in acrylics. Uh, and then, yeah, so, and then just build up the tone so you can get flicked through to the next one. I'm not, sure I'm not sure whether I can zoom. No, no, don't worry. Just go to the next one. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, super. And then, then start to build up from there. And if you go through, you can see the, the kind of um, initial stages of, of this, this one that's behind me now. So go, go to the next one. Do -do. Oh, that's, that's another one I'm doing. Next. And next. There you go. So, so yeah, so this is how I started um, yesterday with this background yellow and just drawing out the lines with um, raw sienna and then onto the next. Just starting to get the tones in. So this is all in acrylics. Because I, like, I use acrylics to do the painting because it's, it's quick um, and quite straightforward. And then, like, this is now oils. This, this can get into the real thing now, the, the oils and the kind of um, more dynamic conversation going on, I think. Does that all make sense? Yeah. Good. But yeah, um, with regards to the underpainting and the colours that you have chosen, mm. um, is this sort of we were talking about the sort of idea of the sort of colours relating to the chakras. Is that right? Yeah. So, so well, so this this is going to be a series of seven paintings I'm doing in in lockdown, and um, I really want to do something about a kind of because um, I can't for me creating painting my spirituality are all kind of woven together. So for me, painting is like meditation, really. Um, and I mean, it's loosely based on the idea of chakras, but really where we're holding energy in our bodies and the quality of that energy. And in the chakra system, uh, each, there, are, there are seven main chakras of the kind of middle of the body, and each one is, is associated with a different colour, and it has a different kind of quality and energy about it. So the first one you showed is the base chakra, which is uh, red. I'll, I've got them all set up. Should, do you want to put, put onto my camera and I'll, I'll take a tour around my... Oh yeah, no worries. I'll stop sharing that. Okay, so here we go. Uh, welcome to my lounge. So, so yeah, so this is the base chakra, um, which is associated with red, which is about um, being grounded and, and earthed. Um, uh, yeah. And, and it's a really kind of primal um, feeling and energy there. And then this, uh, moving through to orange, um, is the sacral chakra. So that's kind of in your abdomen, uh, which is a source of kind of sexual energy, sensual energy and creativity. And that all comes from that, 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 that place there. Uh, the, the yellow one I'm, I'm working on at the moment is the uh, solar plexus, which is about will and power. Um, this one, blue, is uh, throat, which is about communication. Uh, and violet, which is third eye, which is about your kind of sight and vision and how you perceive the world. And then uh, the final one is white, which is the crown, which I haven't... Uh, oh, and the heart as well, which is green. Um, which I haven't started yet because I hate green. So I don't know how I'm going to do that. Um, and then uh, white is the crown chakra, which is this kind of connection to the transcendent. So it goes all the way from the base chakra, which is like the grounding in the earth, all the way up to this kind of transcendent energy. Yeah. Um, and, and so I just want to challenge myself to, to, to make these images, but basic, doing a grounding in each colour. Because normally if I'm doing a painting, my, I'll do an underpainting in a kind of uh, like raw sienna or burnt sienna, which is this kind of, you know, yellowy, browny, orange, um, which is a kind of classic way to, to do a painting. But I thought, well, what happens if, if I do an underpainting in these with, you know, with yellow or red or blue and so on? And it's, re it's really different as you paint on top of it, particularly getting the skin tones. So um, because the, this, 
this first layer of paint is, is shining through. So it, it, it's kind of, um, well, it's taught me a lot about color, doing, even doing this series of paintings, you know, um, and, and how the, the, this underpainting really affects the stuff that's uh, on the surface. Um, I think you get it with some, some people, when I start painting, people say, oh, I like that red or I like that blue. And, and, I, and I always think, don't get too attached to it because I'm going to paint over it. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's the layers for me that, that make it exciting. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Is there, uh, do you feel that the quality of light that you're getting as you're sort of adding and taking away the layers is different? And are you sort of finding it easier or more difficult with certain colours? Uh, yeah, it is. It, um, the, the blue was gr great, purple was great. Uh, the orange was really difficult, uh, particularly getting the skin tones. It's really, really hard. So I'm painting the, uh, where this is the palette I'm using for skin tones at the moment. Um, and I'm, so I'm using the same, uh, the same colours um, on each painting. But because of the, the base colour, it's really changing the way that this, this comes out on the, um, on the surface. And it's not just because of the colour next to it, it's because of the colour underneath it as well, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think, you, I think you said that you are an admirer of grey. Oh yeah, I do like grey. Well, uh, it is exciting to... Um, mixed neutrals. These are all quite garish paintings in some ways. Uh, it is quite exciting to mix a really neutral grey. You, you know, get a blue, a yellow, and a and a red, and and kind of find that really middle ground. Um, and you can just tweak it one way. You can get a blue, a grey, or a red, a grey, or a yellow, and and yeah, just finding that. It's like finding the biting point on a car. Just you know, tweaking it one way or, or another. Uh, and you do the same with skin tones, you know, you think, oh, this is too red, so you just pull it back with a bit of green and, and you know, uh, it's always, it's always, but that's why you said my core theory, I don't, I'm, I don't really have this kind of, I suppose it's just an instinctual thing, you know, mm -hmm. and the more I do it, the more I um, just work with my instincts with the colours. Yeah, it's, um, I'm just looking back at some of your um some of your earlier work um on just through and on your twitter with regards to i'm trying to find the work that you did with saint sebastian um and the sort of orange it was sort of grays and sort of relatively neutral in tone but with the orange sort of circle wasn't there oh yeah um yeah i think it might be on instagram uh, was it a G day of St. Sebastian? Yes, that's it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so then I had Grace in the background, and then I wanted this really vibrant figure in, in the foreground. Wrapped it, he was wrapped in a rainbow flag. Yeah. But, it's, um, but yeah, it's, it's just sort of, I just found that r really sort of provocative. I'm going to see if I can find it. I can't find it at the moment, but I think that I'll. At the end of the call, I'll be able to sort of pop it on the um, event on the event page. I just found it really, really striking when I came and saw that. It, um, was it at um, Thirty Five Chapel Walk? Uh, no, no, it was shown in London at, uh, at uh, Westminster Central Hall. Oh, it, was, yeah. it was for an exhibition on um, uh, migration, and so this was a guy I know who he's, he's a Nigerian. He's a gay Nigerian priest mm -hmm. um, who had who set up an LGBT church in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, he's an incredible guy, but he, he had to flee the country in fear of his life. Uh, so he came to this country and, and now he does work with LGBT plus people, particularly from African nations here, and particularly supporting people in, in faith and spirituality. Um, he's, a, he's a real kind of, he's a real powerhouse, an amazing character. And in his church, he had, he's, there's this painting of St. Sebastian. But obviously, St. Sebastian, when he's depicted in classical paintings, there's always this kind of white, kind of 
fey, you know, young yeah. boy with an amazing body, you know, and uh, and Gino, this this like really powerful um, uh, black African man. Um, and so I wanted to paint G Day as, as Saint Sebastian because he has been through some awful things, you know. Mm -hmm. So he, he's pierced, um, he's got the rainbow flag wrapped around him, but he's kind of looking really hopeful and strong. Uh, so I wanted to, to, to be a celebration of him and his, his, his being and his life and so on. Hmm. Yeah. It was, I remember seeing that and loving the sort of imagery and the sort of subversion, but also the in classical imagery, sort of the image of Saint Sebastian is sort of lauded as this sort of the sort of queer identity wrapped up in and around Saint Sebastian is well sort of documented, and yeah. I just loved the sort of reclaiming of that sort of for a for a new age, and it was just really, 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 really powerful. I'm, it's a shame that I haven't got it here, but I will I will find it or. I'm sure that we'll be able to get it and upload it. Yeah, if I if I'm on my laptop, then I'd, I could uh, I could send you send you a link to it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. In fact, if you want to have a little, just a little discussion, I'll just my laptop's literally just there. I can. I yeah, that's fine. Listen. But yeah. Um. But yeah, I'm not sure. Not entirely sure, Chris. <laughs> if there's at, at this juncture, I feel like um, because Chris's audio is. Is sort of uh, playing up. If there's anything that you feel like you would like to add at this stage, so we'll look. Doo, doo, doo. If you would like to type something or questions prepared, I think that this is the perfect juncture to begin that. Or if there's any, or yourself, Connor, if there's anything that you want to sort of have ready and prepared. Um, I've sort of got a question, but I'm trying to find the right way to say it, so I think I'll put it in at the end. <laughs> That's fair enough. I've made some notes, I'm just trying to figure out what it is and try to work. Yeah, no worries. Um, did we get, did we get everyone's sort of least favourite colours? I'm not sure whether the polls needs ending. Mm. So, scores on the doors are green at least favourite, a vote for yellow, a vote for orange, and a vote for violet. So. <laughs> Chris has put, there's nothing, I'm not sure whether you can read it. There's nothing particular from me. Uh, I didn't answer, but I picked yellow mainly because it clashes with my hair. Ah. <laughs> uh. I said, yeah, there is sort of an aesthetic quality, I suppose, between, I hadn't thought of that sort of fashion with regards to colours and wearing them. Yeah, there is, there is that. I don't think there's any, because my hair's sort of, people call it sort of dirty or mousy blonde. I don't think there's anything that's particularly clashy with regards to my hair colour. To be honest, I can't say that I care if there was. But that's just me. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh, here we are. I have been sent something, so it's on its way. Um, there we are. Oh. Do, do, do. Right. So. Right, here we are. Aha! Save picture as. You get it? I did. It's. I'm just in the process of figuring out where it needs to go. All right. Let's try. Oh. Ooh. It's gone a bit strange. Share picture. Oh. 
get your ass. Right, let's see. I ought to be able to share screen and show you this now. There we go. Can we all see that? Wonderful. But yeah, that's the St. Sebastian. So yeah, I can grab that and I'll pop the link in the chat. Where's the chat? There's the link for all that. Wonderful. So yeah, um, we were just discussing uh, least fav least favorite colors uh, okay. again, and I think that the the poll was again votes for. I think the most was green. So again, you're in good company. I myself voted for yellow, and then violet. Violet, orange, and yellow, I think, were equal with regards to that. But again, a lot of people not liking green. So. But yeah, so. I actually have a question about colour and about the paintings in particular that you've been doing in the series, Richard. Yeah. Um, so we've sort of talked about, well, obviously, how colour can be completely subjective with that that we've just done um, and you talked about uh, not liking the colour green or detesting the colour green I can't remember what you said um, <laughs> but one thing so obviously one of the paints that you have done is green how it's like a two-part how did you choose the colours for each painting unless they're already associated with it and then also how did you find actually painting the green one in a well I, you don't like yeah it? thank you um, I'm not started the green one yet. I'm putting that one off because I'm I'm scared of it. <laughs> but because I I need to work out how I'm going to deal with it. The so the so the colours are the um the uh, the traditional colours associated with each chakra. So if you if you if you just Google chakras you, and look at images, you'll you'll see that that they usually have a body the person meditating, and so it's it's red, orange, yellow, green. Uh, blue, violet, and then white at, at the top. So I've tried to stick with those really, but they also it, it also comes from my own experience of, of meditation and 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 spirituality that because um, I, I was doing these kind of body med, med, I kind of was doing these body meditations myself and just noticing almost like mindfulness, noticing where I'm holding energy in my body and the quality of it and, and so on, um, and then. And then I stumbled across, I mean, the chakra system is, is ancient, you know, and it's, um, it, I, I think it probably comes from Hinduism, I, I guess. Um, and so it's a really ancient way of thinking about spirituality and the body. And I, I was like, wow, when I found it, I was like, oh my God, this is, this is stuff I've actually been experiencing myself. And so then that just helped me kind of hone the, um, the experience. And so even, uh, I mean, you, you, you might, it might not be your thing, but um, in, in meditation, you can almost, you can picture, like, so say for the, uh, the sacral chakra, you can, you, you can picture a bright glowing orange ball there and you can really feel the energy building. Or you can put it in green for the heart, which is um, about life and flourishing and so on. Um, so, yeah. Uh, that, that, that's really, and, and, it's, and it's, it's been the kind of challenge to me too, to 
let that dictate what colour I'm going to use, yeah, rather than just say, oh, oh, I, I, I quite, you know, I feel drawn to this, but say, okay, because I, I would never ever paint a painting with this yellow on, and so to, the challenge for me is to to kind of make something work with it, yeah, and, and make a painting that, that works with that, um, and so the, the green one's going to be, the, like I say, the biggest challenge for me, and how, so how I'm going to work, yeah. But when, when there's green, there's green. So, the, so the um, I'm just looking. At, I've got my box of paints down here. So I'm just finding the, the thing that I bought. Um, so I bought this. Um, that I use oil sticks as well as paints. And um, I bought uh, this. This is like a gorgeous turquoisey green. I don't know if you can see that. But, you know, we're saying we, we, we don't like green. Actually, this, this is a really. I don't know whether it's picking up. I, I love this. Um, <laughs> See that? I, I, <laughs> uh, so it's greenception. <laughs> so yeah, I, so I'm hoping maybe it will redeem itself in my in my eyes uh, when I start using this. Uh, I just want to. Oh, it's a kind of yeah, like a kind of turquoisey viridian kind of. That's oh, amazing. that's nice. Do you like it? I do. I really do. Yeah, when you think of green straight away, you think of a very vibrant yellowy green, but that's got more blue in it, which yeah. is actually yeah. quite nice. I mean, the, the, it's, the, the, it's all right, this, isn't it? This is, oh, this is, yeah, this is a turquoisey blue, but it is, it is greeny. Yeah. 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 It could be. Yeah. The, 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 ke the chemist in my head is saying that that's sort of, it reminds me of verdigris, sort of copper oxide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a mongrel, really. I li I basically I write about art, but my background is sort of chemistry and biochemistry. So, but, but these, that intersection is interesting, isn't it? Because so what so what is color? You know what? So there's white light is yeah. shining on this surface, and the surface is so white light is obviously made up of all these different wavelengths of light, and and then this surface is absorbing so. All the all the wavelengths of light, apart of this electromagnetic radiation, apart from this yellow, mm -hmm. which is a particular frequency, and is shining it back out. Yeah. Um, and that's all it is, and yeah. that's, that's that's all color is that that, that surface absorb certain frequencies of electromagnetic radiation and, and reflected others. Mm -hmm. And yet, the miracle of human beings is that we then weave all these stories and experiences and feelings around it, which is astonishing, mm -hmm. I think. Um, you know, how, how does, and the, the culture kind of piles on meaning to particular colors, you know? Um, purple for kind of opulence and emperors and so on, and, 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 and all of that. Red for like anger or passion or love. Uh, how does that happen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it's just the sort of, whether the like true or not, is the associations that we do have with the colours, um, and I suppose you can sort of use it. It could even be like a comment on that if you are choosing a colour because of what people typically think of it. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, as far as my dislike of yellow is concerned, that is bound up in again my sort of societal norm of the fact that I associate yellow with cheerful, with sort of, with cheerfulness. I mean, you look at Van Gogh and he thought that yellow and sunflowers was basically associated with death and <laughs> yeah. sort of morbi morbidity. And that's why he didn't paint sunflowers for so very, very long because he thought that they were challenging. So, again, it's just sort of colours and societal norms warp, shift, distort over, well, a relatively short amount of time. I mean, you've only got to look at er earlier on when Liz, who unfortunately her internet connection was bad, and the same with uh, Rebecca. They send their apologies, by the way. Um, but, again, it's just a case of colours and their perceptions and how they are interpreted, I just find it really interesting and fascinating. Yeah. 
well, yes, yeah, it's, it's culturally determined. It's well, and the way our language divides up colour as well is really interesting. Mm -hmm. That um, that almost like you, you a particular cultures can't see certain colours because they don't have the word for it. You know, because mm -hmm. because the spectrum is continuous. So there's no there's no line dividing yellow from green or green from blue. It's yeah. just it's continuous. But our language. Oh, makes it interesting. Forward. It's interesting you should say that. If I move out of the way, that is sort of chartreuse, which is sort of yellowy, greeny, greeny, yellowy. Is yeah. it one? Is it the other? Yeah. What is it? Um, it's sort of, is the, and it's the same with, it's that colour of tennis balls, isn't it? I'm just saying, yeah, yeah. Are, those, are those yellow? Are those green? I'm constantly getting to a fight with my brother with regards to whether they're yellow or green. I've got it's, 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 yellow dungarees, and if I wear them, they're sort of on the border, and if I wear them with something very obviously yellow, they look orange, and if I wear them with something that's very obviously orange, they look yellow, so I never know. It's, it's, like, that, it's like that dress, isn't it, that sometimes <laughs> it's yellow, and it's sometimes, it is, it's sometimes it's yellow, some people see it as white really? and gold, some people see it as blue and, what is it, blue and pink? Yeah, but well, because colour's happening in our brains. Yeah. It's not actually this thing that's out there. Um, this, this is just like wavelengths of, you know, electromagnetic wavelengths. Yeah. Around. What's it? Colour is actually happening in, in, in our process. In brain, in yeah. brain. And that's why putting one colour next to another colour cha changes, like I said, it changes our, our um, the way we're perceiving that colour. Um, it, it's really so the, the whole thing's alive, and it's all about just the deep, deep organic stuff of being human and our weird perceptions of the world. Mm. Um, which is, I mean, which I, I think too about because I'm interested in um, queerness and, and, and so on. And I know you are, Steve, and, and, and queerness and art. That, um, that when we start talking about this, we we're moving into a kind of queer um, sensibility where there aren't, you know, fixed categories, you know, that the boundaries are, are blurred, you know, thing, things aren't necessarily one thing or another. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that there's, there's a kind of queer sensibility in the midst of all that as well that can be teased out in some ways. Yeah. I think that the, the, the notion of putting colours into boxes of sort of warm and cool seems a little bit do you do you see a use for that yeah that's really helpful and I'm, so um so I, I, I'll, it's, it's really helpful when you're mixing colors and i think you know i don't really want to mention it but i think he he, do, he, yeah, he, do, he does talk about this doesn't he that that um so uh oh yeah so um so this is this is quite a, a warm red here. This this cadmium red. Can you see it? Yeah, I, I yeah. mean I, I I can. I don't speak for everyone, but um, yeah. and 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 this is quite a this is a this cadmium yellow is a kind of reddy yellow. So this is mm -hmm. a yellow on the on the red side yeah. of the of the cool wheel, and that's that's a, a red on the kind of yellow side. Mm -hmm. And so if you mix them together, you'll get a really vibrant orange, like mm -hmm. really vibrant orange. But if you if you had like lemon yellow, which is a kind of bluer yellow, mm -hmm. and maybe crimson alizarin, which is kind of on the purpley side of red, if you mix that, that red and yellow together, you're going to get a really sludgy, neutrally orange. Yeah. You're, so, you're talking to you're talking to someone who you've you've said words that are pinging off my chemistry. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, basically, I mean, basically, but yeah, it's sort of. I'm having to sort of, I, I experienced this at another um, exhibition um, with um, S1 Art Space, Ilona Saga. Um, it was basically about, um, it was about Park Hill. Um, and she'd taken images of an X-ray crystallography. Um, well, an X-ray crystallographic image of, um, the concrete that was used in order to make Park Hill, and to every but and to everybody else, it was just this sort of abstract image 
of all of these sort of hexagons moving around. To me, it was like, oh, I know that that's sort of silicon. I know that that's sort of calcium carbonate. But I had to sort of take my head out of science and plug in art. And then I sort of spoke to myself and I was like, do I actually need to do that? No. Can both of these things exist in the same space? Mm -hmm. But I think it was sort of the idea that I'd had knowledge that other people didn't, and I felt a little bit selfish. The fact is, that... Is, that, that yeah. is knowledge selfish? I, you know, it, it's like you could... I mean, again, I suppose it's like the language we use for colour. So if, if, we didn't, if you didn't have the a word for blue, could we actually see it? You've got the words for those things. Yeah. You know? And so you sit, so if I say, I, I know, I don't know a lot about x-ray crystallography, I know a little bit about it, but I, don't, I certainly don't know enough to be able to interpret those kind of images. Mm. Um, but you, you have got the language to do that. Yeah. So, so um, you could through education. So, so you can look at it and, and actually that you, you can see, you can see something that I can't see. It's yeah. like, Looking at a language that I don't understand. If I look at a Chinese, say, mm -hmm. what I, I just see lines. Whereas, whereas someone who, who speaks Mandarin yeah, yeah, will, yeah. will see like whole worlds there. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that it was. I think that it was just the fact that the fact that I was in a sort of state of greater understanding. The fact that I felt like I, I felt like I was incumbent to share that with everyone and <laughs> i wasn't in a state to but, but yeah, little... there's, the, there's the thing it might it might then that knowledge then might kill someone else's experience of it because they might have a different experience of it that's it, the it, thing it was it was a beautifully abstract image in its own right so i should just let, leave it be as it is well, may, but well, maybe because of your your education, you weren't able to have that privilege, that privilege of just like yeah. what it is, you know. That's the, the, that's the other because thing. Because, because of the way you, you know what you know, hang on, you can't just look at it as an abstract image anymore. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, so d don't feel guilty about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So. I think we've ex we've ex is there anything else that's left to explore with regards to your work, Rick? Or no? Um, if you want to keep follow me on Instagram at Rick Start, and then when you when I do the green painting, you'll see whether I succeed or not. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure you will succeed. Oh, I don't know. I, we'll I have. <laughs> I'm, sh I'm sure that you will succeed. If the, if the rest of them are anything to go by, I'm sure that you will succeed. You. I'm, intrigued, I'm intrigued to see with regards to the arrangement of the figures, how mm. the bell, that was, that was going to be my last question. Mm. How, do you, how do you sort of decide the arrangement of the figures for each sort of placement of the chakra? Oh, well, yeah. So this was, um, so I, I, I work with this, this guy and we, we were kind of meditating together and really finding the energy of each chakra. Mm -hmm. And then and we've used rope. Um, I feel like I managed, that's another interesting thing that I'm not interested in. Um, but with the kind of bondage and, and connection of bodies and so on. Uh, um, and so we kind of moved around, really sensing the energy in each, in each um, Chakra. So for each one, you know, it wasn't just random stuff. We were like, okay, what? So for the um, for the uh, for the base chakra about grounding, where he's kind of tied to the earth, you know. So so that's what we wanted to wanted to explore. Um, this this is about um, will and power, which is their solar plexus. And so mm -hmm. it, it, you know, this kind of push and pull and, and struggling and and so on. Um, so yeah, it's not arbitrary at all. We we try to move our. I mean, in a sense, it. I'm not. A, I'm not a performance artist yet, but it, it was a, It was almost a performance of, of getting finding that energy and, mm -hmm. and how the bodies move that energy. Yeah. Um, and then, and then for me, 
painting it painting is performance really as well you know because you're moving your body and um and you just have to have a paintbrush in your hand and, and then the the, the the canvas is kind of intercepts the movement and so trying to re-embody that energy in the uh in the um in the paint yeah that's great yeah. Are they yeah. going to be shown as a series or can they be shown individually? Um, I'd really like to see them all as a series uh, together if, uh, if I can find somewhere. Um, and would you be shown in terms of how you'd show them, would you show them in order of the chakras that you yeah. mentioned earlier? Yeah, yeah. Or could yeah. they be in any order? No, I'd, I'd like to see them in, 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 in order. But my only, yeah, no, I'd like to see them, see them in order. And may, I think I want to write some kind of reflections about each one as well. Um, may, maybe also meditations and stuff, but and almost for them to hang like, like a kind of temple space or a sacred space, you know. Ooh. I mean, if you want someone to collaborate with in terms of writing stuff, I am a writer. Oh, there you go. Then. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's have a chat. Let's have a chat. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just. <laughs> This isn't a gig. I'm not trying to get work on it. <laughs> but yeah, um, that, that, that'd be really interesting. That'd be really interesting. Anyway, no, let's get my head out of that. Um, so, unless anybody else has any other questions, um, Chris, do, anything else that you'd like to type that I can relay? <laughs> oh, just bear with me one second. Mm. Don't think so, other than thank you. Great. So Thanks, yes, I'm going to, I'm thank going to um, bring this to a close, I think, uh, and thank everyone for attending. Um, next, I shall be um, posting all of the links with regards to this. Uh, the recording will be going up on the event page once I've figured it out, as well as um, the uh, YouTube channel. Uh, so again, thank you very much for attending. And I bid you a very good evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.